right, everyone. Good evening to a special edition of Cocktails and Conversation with me, April BB. I'm missing my partner in crime, Kevin Wealth, but we will catch him later. He is currently on vacation for the holidays, so I'm going to go it alone. So let's start the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Sisterhood of the Traveling Peaches. And this was everything but sisterhood. Now, because we're doing a special edition, I decided to ditch the alcohol tonight, and I'm doing Cookie Two Step by Bluebell and some chocolate chip cookies. If you look over my blogness, I've done a recipe for chocolate chip cookies, so go check that out. And let's start. Let's start with the opening episode. So, Portia, she decides to go to work with Dennis and Dennis's mother at his, I guess, hot dog restaurant, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the name. Isn't that bad? And she decides she's not telling anybody that she's pregnant. So she gets there and she's working side by side with his mom. And the mom wants to know what's the tea. So she wants to investigate because she feels like they're planning a wedding. They're moving too fast. So she waits till Dennis, the mother waits till Dennis gets busy. And she decides to start cross-examining Portia. She asks Portia, so is there something I should know? Like what's going on with you and my son? And she was like, what you mean, what's going on? She's like, you know, what's going on? What's the tea? Portia plays dumb. And the mother circles back and asks about the prenup. Portia decides to dish check question. It's a valid question, but Portia's not trying to answer it. So, then we go on to Cynthia and Nene. Who was talking about this trip to Destin. Now, right now, it's a couple's trip. But I already saw a little bit of the preview in the commercial. I try not to watch the previews for the following week. However, during the week, I did catch a preview. And I saw all the ladies in the bus, but no men. So I'm like, yeah, I bet you it's not going to be a couple's trip. So, okay, strike one. Cynthia calls up Nene. Bring, bring. Hey, Nene, girl, my man can't make it. Ah, uh, I'm like some suspect with Cynthia and Michael's relationship. He's not made not one appearance. She's had these fillers for men. And I'm like, so what's going on with you and Michael? You know, last week, well, who did we see? Leon, no Noelle's baby, you know, her baby daddy, her first... Yeah, it's her baby daddy. They were never married. And then at the bourbon and boobs party, we see her with some random dude. I don't even, I still, you guys, comment down below if you know who that man was that sent you. I think his name was Marcus. But she took him to bourbons and boobs. He looks so familiar. And I mentioned that in the prior week. But yeah, so Cynthia keeps popping up with these randoms. She's going stag to a couple's vacation. So I just feel like something's up with her and Michael. Is she doing like Kenya used to do? Remember how Kenya was paying men to basically be her plus one or build her storyline. So I don't know. Just something not right. But Cynthia's beautiful. Oh my God, her cheekbones. She wore her hair and braids this episode and you just see her features so well. She's gorgeous. She's absolutely beautiful. So anyway, so next we go on to Shamari, Shamari DeVoe. Shamari DeVoe's stylist is helping her pack because she doesn't have any fashion. How dreadful. But uh, she's, her stylist is helping her pack for this trip. Her husband, Ronnie, pops in and he's like, hey, hon. 
He sits down. He cops the squat. Talks to her. So he's like, what's 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 going on? I, I, I catch a vibe with you and this Porsche girl. We're like, what's up with the two of y'all? She was like, babe, I don't even know. But it is something up because she didn't come introduce herself at the boobs and bourbon party. Or bourbons and boobs, however you want to call it. But she was like, yeah, she caught that shade. She caught it. Or she can be shady, baby. So, you know, Ron's like, you should definitely be a woman about yours and address that. And she said, I will give an opportunity. So, we know that that's coming up, right? Okay. So now, we go to Candy. So, right now, as we know, Ronnie's on board. Because Ronnie ain't backed out. Ronnie ain't said nothing. So, all right, we go to Candy. Now, this trip, this couple's trip to Destin takes place during Todd's birthday, right before, or I think before, but his birthday is approaching. And I guess every birthday, he takes a trip alone or with his boys. I'm not quite clear, but he takes this trip. So, Candy know he takes a trip every year. Now, why y'all didn't bring this up at the party? Why didn't y'all say something then? But I digress. So, she's packing and she's talking to Riley. And so, she tells Riley, well, Todd can't make it. And Riley's like, well, how are you going to go stab to a couple's vacation. She's like, well, your mama is. So that commits to packing, commits to talking. And I can already see, like I said before earlier, I can see where this is going. It is a girl's trip. There's no way around there. It's a girl's trip. All right. So we already know Ty not going, Cynthia Man not going. Now, we saw Dennis earlier. Dennis looked healthy, right? Didn't look like nothing wrong with Dennis. Dennis was working at his restaurant. Ronnie was talking to his wife. Last thing. So, we got two guys in. We got Greg included, right? That's three. All right, so now we go on to Nene and Greg, right? So Nene explains her, her and Greg are in the kitchen. I'm sorry, I didn't scroll too much. No, but her and Greg is in the kitchen. Greg over there fiddle faddling with the counter, cleaning the counter. They're discussing his treatment. Or lack thereof. They decided that Greg will go holistic. He's not going to have chemo treatments. He decided against it. Wishing Greg all the best of luck. He actually don't look bad slimmer. You know, when they showed the flashbacks, you can see that he was a little thicker. But he doesn't look bad. You know, whoever his stylist is, they dress him well. So it looks good on him. He doesn't look sickly like you'd have to really know him but they dress him so well he doesn't look sickly and maybe they're just you know playing it up for the cameras for us to make him not look sick but okay so Nene and Greg are in the kitchen and she's like honey all these men are canceling they can't make it so he go she goes down the list Cynthia dude can't make it Candy man can't make it. Then we find out Porsche man can't make it. Okay. I'm like, where the heck that come from? Why can't Porsche man make it? He's just working. We just saw him in the first scene. But it's whatever. Bravo think we stupid. Right? Supposedly... Dennis pulls something while playing basketball. 
He didn't hurt his foot. He didn't hurt his big toe. Whatever. All right. I'm going to let him make it on that. So Greg is like, well, the, all the men need to be in or none of the men are in. That's a statement. I knew that was coming. He could have still made it happen. There's been other trips where not all the men went. I don't know. Sheree used to go to them things for years. And her and her baby daddy, ex, what is that man? Whitfield. That man, allegedly, he had his uh, girlfriend when they was on that Hawaii trip. And they was just playing it up for the camera. So, child, they could have went ahead and went to Destin. Destin, what? An eight-hour drive, five-hour drive from Atlanta. They could have gone and did that. But okay. So now, Grayson said what he said. So now it's no longer a guy's trip. It's a girl's trip. So, Candy made the suggestion that everybody meet at her house. And, you know, she has basically two houses, right? She's got a little compound. She got the guest house and the main house. So she decided, well, we could all meet at the guest house. She had her gray haired. I didn't know who this woman was. First of all, I'm like, is she the cook? Is she the chef? But it's a, a, a older lady with a gray mohawk. It's very stylish, very trendy. And I'm like, is she the cook? But then I looked and Ace is there. I said, oh, she the daycare provider. She babysitting Ace or she Ace's grandma or, you know, what Riley say? Mama ain't never around. Don't have no other kids. So, <laughs> that's uh, his play mom right there. Well, anyway, she have the daycare provider. Go on and hook up some cut up fruit for the ladies and have some cocktails ready. And watch Ace all at the same time. Okay? Okay. So, uh, <laughs> shady the shame so the ladies start filing in okay let me see I can go over my notes for this because I'm going to try to get it in order so Greg and Nene on their way right look like Greg driving or they got a driver but he's there in the car so I'm assuming he's driving they show them we know they on their way. All right. So then Dennis drop off Portia in some boot. Not a cast, a boot. Okay. Then Ronnie drops off Shamari. And such the gentleman. So right when he taking care of his wife, Cynthia pulls up. And they don't make any mention in, of who is in the car with Cynthia. Now, I know in prior episodes, Noel was driving a, um, a Range Rover. So I'm thinking it's Noel, but why would she acknowledge her child driving in the front seat? But they don't acknowledge it. It looks like she got off the passenger side, so we know it's not an Uber. And Ronnie, the gentleman, goes over and helps Cynthia get her luggage out the car and take it to, to the limo bus. Okay. So then we don't really see Tanya pull up, but Tanya's there. So, you know, we see the scene where Ron is helping Cynthia. They put the luggage in the car or in the, the limo bus, and then they walk in. Inside, when you get inside, Tonya's here all of a sudden. Tonya there, Portia, they made it inside. And Tonya over there, let's turn up, let's have some cocktails, let's have some drinks. Portia's like, oh, I'm cleansing. I'm cleansing from um, alcohol. I've been cleansing for two weeks. Cynthia in there, Jamari in there. 
And they're like, oh, really? You tell. I don't know why. I just feel like it's a, just a mess ball. Ain't no sisterhood in sight. And I give Bravo the ratings. But honey, let me tell you what's popping on Sunday nights. Switch on over to TLC. It's an hour difference. Go watch 90 Day Fiance. See, those people, they know how to stir that pot and keep you watching. I feel like Housewives, Atlanta, like I stay there, I stay with them. But mm, some of this stuff seems scripted. Some people too, too, too big now to create any kind of drama. They bring these other people in and the new booties got to create the drama. Like they got to earn their stripes. At least, that's how I see them. They got to earn their stripes. Because if you notice, Shamari going through it, Eva going through it, and you can always depend on Marlo to be uber messy. Stir that pot, walk away, and sometimes stand up on it. Marlo don't give a good gosh darn. Man, she don't, Marlo don't care about being a diva, but Marlo pop up. She on this trip, no ma'am. I don't, that didn't even show, give Marlo or Tonya the common courtesy to show them arriving. But, you know, I guess if you're not a peach holder, they're not going to show you arriving. So, anyway, everybody following in. Everybody arrived. Ain't nothing special happening. Greg make a speech, as Greg always do. And he's like, this is a chance for you to learn about each of each person here on this trip. Learn something new. Create a bond. Create a sisterhood. Ciao. Portia chime in. Portia, Portia, Portia. She chime in and she's like, well, some of these women got two faces. <laughs> I love Greg's response. He said, well, you better learn something about each face. Learn one new thing about each face. I said, Greg, I know that's right. Like I said, Greg is all right with me. And it was like, Nene said, one of her confessionals. People always like Greg. Always like Greg. And him, you know, even though him and Nene had they fought, fallen out, think about it. Greg has never really created an enemy on the show. Who never been messy. At one point in time, Peter sent your ex-husband. He might as well have a dress on. Peter was so dark on messy. But great, he always been a stand-up dude about his. Well, anyhow, they all pile into this limo bus. Ooh, child. And head over to Destin. On the way there, Nene has the ladies pull the number out the jar. Okay. So, they pull their numbers out the jar. They don't know what it means, but they know that it's in relation to that room. All right. Ooh, child, this ice cream. The, uh, then they decide to play true for dare. Messy, messy mouth, messy mouth. So, <laughs> I can't. I can't with these women. Oh, my gosh. And I knew that this was going to come up. So, they had to do stupid stuff. Eva got to call her husband and have phone sex. She corny. Who else? Oh, Candy got a call. Well, she was supposed to flash Todd, like FaceTime Todd and show her boobs. She's like, I ain't doing that. So Nene changed it up and said, have phone sex. You know, Candy with the business, she gonna do it. So she do it. Todd just as lame as Eva. What'd she say? You know, I love how you do it from the back. You eat me from the back, whatever. I ain't gonna go into all that. And he was like, damn, girl, you been drinking? <laughs> you been drinking? He was, Candy was like, you supposed to go along with it, man. That was funny. But, you know, Candy a freak. She got that high freak number. She freaking, freaking, dickin'. 
So remember, this game is tooth and dare. And this is so scripted to me. So scripted. So it's Portia's turn. Oh, I can't eat no more. It's Portia's turn. Portia, Portia, Portia says she'll take truth over a deal. I guess she might have been scared, scared that she'd have to drink something because she's pregnant and she decided she's not telling nobody she's pregnant. I get that. It's too early. Let's like make sure you make it. But uh, uh, yo, big sis, Nene, whatever you want to call her, is super messy. Now, you know, Nene know the business. Nene know everything on both sides, all sides. Because she talked to Candy. She didn't talk to Portia. Okay. Nene asked the question. Has Dennis been in a relationship with anybody on this bus? Or someone on this bus that, or someone that knows someone on this bus? Of course we know that. Candy, hello. So Candy over there making her weird faces, looking up at the ceiling. And she goes, me. Lord, y'all just went over this last episode. Why we keep going over the same thing? This I need, I bravo, I need y'all to do better. I need y'all to write better. Y'all getting boring because you know what? With this generation, this day and age, you can't keep stirring the pot with the same stuff. We need something else. It's got to be gumbo. It's got to be some scrimp in there, some chicken in there, some, some other stuff. It's got a sausage. It's got to be a mixture of things. So, Bravo, do better. Stop bringing Dennis's pasta. Y'all keep going over the same stuff again and again and again and again. All right. So, here we are with the Dennis thing, him seeing other women. And so... Portia tried to shut it down. She's like, we are in a very strict, monogamous relationship, and we have been for the past six months. Why she even put a time frame? Why she even feel like she got to defend her man? I mean, I ain't mad at her for defending him. However, so Marla turns to Candy, and Candy's just like, mm, like I ain't saying nothing else, right? As she shouldn't. So Marla turns to Candy, messy mouth over there without a peach. So how recent was this person, Candy? Don't she? What she tell her? Cl Candy, don't clam down now. So how recent did your friend talk to Dennis? That's just a mess. Just a mess. This girl pregnant, but they don't know. They're just naturally messy heifers. So Candy says two months ago, and I'm sorry, Candy. Your man told you. Ty told you. Keep your mouth shut. Stay out of stuff. But she right in the midst of things. Okay. Because when it was tied, and I go to this every week. When it was tied, you was around there crying, voice shaking, it, whatever. But she was like, you know, Portia was like two months ago. So, you know, Portia and her feels about it. And she's still trying to be like cool about it. She ain't really like nutted up on nobody and, and she kind of told Dennis earlier like since she's pregnant she gonna be cool she not she not gonna trip on these women and then you know what the portion of the season don't really trip let me say that she don't trip I'm about to move this towel out the way Gina Tay Gina Tay but um so it creates this whole conversation and then Bravo being super messy. So they scan, they show a picture and Candy and her confessional talking about, well, three months ago, Portia was at some party and some dude had, some random dude had his hands all over and on her booty. Like, Candy, if you don't stop clocking that girl's but JJ, I just can't with her. The problem with Candy is Candy wants some of that Portia. That's all that is. And wait till she find out she's pregnant. And I have seen, I don't know where it was, in one of their snippets for the season. So I know Destin is not going to go over well for those two women. Because I think in Destin, Candy nuts up. You know when she get the shaky voice and, oh my God, being extra. So, anyway... 
yeah, candy in that confessional, being hella messy. It's obvious. And then, you know, Portia tried to circle back and clean up her man's name. Well, we weren't that serious about each other. We just got serious. And let them, if they got an open relationship, let that MF be open, okay? But it's whatever. So they reach Destin. And Nene instructs the ladies, oh, look around the house, look around the house, look at all the rooms. And then come back here because we got some more to do because y'all ain't y'all ain't just going to pick your rooms this time. So she was like, remember the numbers on the bus? Okay. So they go looking at the room. And you know, Candy want to be a boss. She won't, as always, she want the best room. So, um. Their numbers, like, I think, who was four first? Oh, Eva was first. Cynthia was second. Portia was third. And then they don't even tell you what the rest of the number was were, right? So, and I got to look at my notes on this one because. Let me think. So, Eva gives Shamari the simple room. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's a little small box. Um, and I, who I mean, I guess I knew from America's Top Model that Eva was messy. But she's really turning on the mess factor this season. And I get it because she's a new girl there. Shamari and her got to earn a stripes, got to earn a position for next season. I get it. Okay. And, you know, we all know from last season that Nene brought Eva in. So, yeah, you'll hear me out on that one. So, okay. So, Eva gives Shamari the simple room. Cynthia gives Portia the room across from Nene. Being that Nene planned the trip, she got the best room in the house. That, she's like, I'm the host. The host gets the best room. You bitches are going to scrap over it. Y'all going to do this number thing. Okay, so basically the number on the bus was like one, two, three, four, right? That dictates the order. Then they come to the house. Nene has another jar. You pull a person's name. Now, the, the number one person, Eva, gave out that room, as I said a few minutes ago, to Shamari. The second person, Cynthia, gives Portia a very nice room across from Nene. The third person was Portia, and she gives Cynthia a bomb-ass room with a balcony. And you can kind of tell this. I feel like this is all planned out. And they also tell Candy probably to calm her ego down and take a, a decent room, but not top skill room. Because, you know, normally Candy want to be the boss of everything, and she wants the boss-ass room. Ain't mad at her. But, okay. So, um, all right. So, Portia pulls, gives... Um, Cynthia the bomb ass room Shamari gives Eva the upstairs room some damn weird Marlo gives Tanya the room that's small with like a bunk bed in it crazy um, so Tanya gives Candy Tanya gives Candy the room she she actually Tanya gives Candy the room that she actually wanted. It's on the first floor when you first come in. It's a nice room with a bathroom. Um, and then true Marlo fashion, she complains because um Marlo gets the room on the first floor across across the way from what's that girl named Candy. So both of them on the first floor. And I'm like, girl, bye. You always complain. That's why you didn't get that other job. But you know. You got to learn to be happy with stuff and quit complaining. Because, girl, what you do? What you do for a living? What kind of job you got? Who you be with? Because you know what word on the street is, but I ain't going to go down that path. But we got the mug shots and the receipts. <laughs> oh, Marlo. And I, the, you know what the crazy thing is? I was rooting for Marlo to be on the show and have a peach. But all that complaining you do, I don't think you ever going to get a peach. Mm. Mm. Then Marlo keeps shading. I don't know why she keeps prodding and poking at Eva. I think Marlo does that whole hazing thing with certain people. Because remember in Barcelona, she was messing and tampering with Portia. 
Now she on Shamari and Eva's heels. And that tells me you kind of jello because you didn't get a peach, right? And then maybe production and told you pick on the newbies, pick on the newbies. But who knows? Because she good at co-sign, like sidelining and throwing little stuff out there for the uh, senior staff, let me call them senior staff, to respond to. Because remember on the bus, she was like, well, Candy, don't get clamped down now. But anyway. So, uh, anyway, so, you know, they all disperse. They go to their rooms. <sighs> Nene said, come back in 10 minutes. The chef is already, he's setting up stuff. He preparing things. It made me think of my Jamaica trip. Oh, my God, that was so awesome. We had a chef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let me stop reminiscing and get back to the shizzle. So... They sit down to the table. They got their food. Child, shady Cynthia. She started. That's why I said these women so shady. And they talk, they got the nerve to call this sisterhood of the traveling peaches. Who named this episode? Because there ain't no sisterhood in place at all. But, yeah. So, Cynthia said, oh, I was on Instagram. Eva, how was your bachelorette party? Now, if y'all been watching Real Housewives of Atlanta... Who did, y'all, who did uh, Eva say she wanted to give the speech at her wedding? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nene, right. So why wasn't Nene invited, right? And that's her big sis, right? Mm. You think Cynthia kind of jello? Mm. Mm. <laughs> and then it's attack on Eva at that point. So... Other people chime in. Yeah, that's uh Portia chime in. Yeah, that's uh so why you didn't invite Nene? Oh, and before I say that, Portia's like, oh, I got invited a long time ago. So it wasn't a because I so Eva throws out there, oh, it was a surprise, right? Portia's like, Well, how was a surprise? I got invited a long time ago. And then Eva, Eva backpedal was, you know, my friends, they was going to be in Miami and blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, really? This is so freaking petty, petty, petty. And then Eva asked, she asked Nene, like, is this weird to you? Like, did I do something wrong? Pretty much like. Nina, Nina, you know, they go to commercial. They, they kind of create this drama or this pause. And Nene come back and, you know, let everybody whip on Eva for a minute. Eva damn near in tears. And then Nene chastised her. But in her confessional, she's like, girl, we ain't that far apart in age. Like, stop calling me big sis. Really? Y'all over a decade apart. I think Eva, like, 30 five Nene like 50 but anyway y'all stop tripping on folks but yeah so <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah.